I'd love for you to give the Hindu narrative on what Nagas are slash were uh, based on whatever you know about it. We all know Nagas. Most Hindus know Nagas. It's the word we use for snake. Okay. But how are Nagas mentioned in Indian texts? Right? They were not snakes. They were not humans as well. Right? They were a completely different species that looked like humanoids. Right, that they looked human, but they could also shape shift. Oh, really? Yes, they could change into whatever they wanted to be, and they never lived on the ground. They always lived in subterranean levels, meaning they only lived underground. So, in modern terms, right, nagas are reptilians. Right, they're an alien species that are able to change color, change shape. They can look like human if they wanted to, and they live in a different dimension. They they kind of lived underground or something. My question is about what you saw abroad. You said that Peru had a version of the Nagas. What's up? It's a little bit of a strange theory, but but Nagas are actually found everywhere. Okay, you can go to the U.S. and you can see a great serpent mound in Ohio. This is a giant snake that you can only see from the air. And um, if you go to Peru, these are called Amaru, which basically is a Sanskrit word. Amar means an immortal god, right? Right, in Sanskrit. If you go to Colombia, you can see the Nagas guarding. You can, uh, if you go to Colombia, there's a place called San Agustin. And then you can see a lingam guarded by a Naga. Like a shivling. Yes. Yeah, so you have this Naga culture. Of course, you can see this in Mayans. Uh, you can see this in South America. Then you can, um, in Israel, Nagas mm -hmm. are called, yeah, Nagas are called Nakash. Basically, the same terminology. And uh, you know this, right? Snakes are called serpents in the Bible. They're called serpents. And Jews called it seraph. And Hindus call it Sarpa. This is still the word we use in South. We call it Sarpam, meaning Naga. So it's not just that we all worship the Nagas, but it's even the names are similar. Nagas are called Nakash, and Sarpas are called serpents or seraphs mm. in all over the world. So it, if you look at the entire world and if you look at all the ancient civilizations, they will tell you one story. It's a common story. Very, very similar common story. Okay. That humans, the very first rulers came from Nagas. As in the first rulers over human beings were actually Nagas. If you go to Cambodia, for example, the very first ruler is a Naga ruler. It's not completely human, right? And the Nagas, they come from somewhere and they take over the planet and they start building civilization. So they were the original ancestors, right? Of humans? In a, in a way. They, they come from somewhere. It's a very hard uh, thing to explain. I could explain it to you. In no. a... In a Go yeah, yeah, I could explain it to you in a way that let's say a race of reptilians, right? They go to a planet and they and they find a bunch of cavemen there. Right? So they so they land on this planet. Now what will the cavemen think? These are gods. Exactly. So what we actually see from various accounts is basically that the original queens and kings of almost any civilization are Naga kings. There were beings that came from the sky and these beings were very short and they came from the sky and they started to civilize human beings. The human beings were initially afraid of them. 
okay? But they taught all the construction technology, all the, you know, the, how to make fire, for example. They taught all their stuff. Like, we don't know what they were doing. And then after a particular point of time, like maybe after building all the fantastic structures, they're just gone. So, they're, so they just vanish. What Nagas are, if you will, right? They're not snakes, right? That's clear. They're also not human, but they're a completely different species or a race. All ancient civilizations mention them. They mention them as the, the very first queen or king of their civilization. And I have a theory about this, right? So this is a, a very interesting theory that, I, that I, <laughs> I like to think about. So let's say you have a photo album, right? of the last 50 years, right? This, this album, let's say, let's say I have it. Let's say I have a photo album of all my family members, right? So this is, I'm not there 50 years ago, obviously. So I, I wouldn't be in some of the pictures. So how do you find out who's the oldest person in the family? By the looks. What else would you, would you, would you use? Just from the photos. Just from the photos, how would you find out who's the oldest? If you had 100 pictures, how would you find out who's the oldest thing? Who's the oldest person in the, in the family? Maybe carbon date all the photographs and then see which no, one. No, the doing. person, right? So who was, let's say there are like a couple of grandmas and grandpas, blah, blah, blah. So the oldest person should appear in all the pictures. Mm. Right? That's the way to find out mm. who's the oldest. because. I won't be there like 50 years ago, right? And maybe some other person may not be there because he's born after that time. But the person who is in all the pictures must be the oldest, mm. right? This, is, this, is, this should be common sense. This is how we find out, yeah. oh, who's the, who's the oldest employee in your organization? He's the person who's in all the pictures, right? Because in some pictures, the new employees are not there, blah, 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 right? This is the scenario with the Nagas. You can find Nagas in all the temples. You may not find other gods. You may not find, for example, Kartikeya. You may not find Ganesha. But the Nagas are, by design, they are there in every temple. Not only in temples, but no matter where you go, the Nagas are carved in their ancient structure. Why aren't uh, historians thinking more about this? Like, why has this come up on a podcast? You know, why isn't it there in the mainstream? Because it's borderline fantasy stuff, right? Nobody, nobody, unless you have a crazy guy like me coming out and saying, Nagas may have created the world's civilization. It's a ridiculous thought process, right? There, there was a guy called David Icke. Have you heard of him? There was a guy called David Icke. And there's, he's still there, by the way. And he's the one who said, there are reptilians controlling humans now. You know what people did? People made him into a laughing stock of, of his time, actually. And now he's banned from, from YouTube and Facebook and everywhere, right? But when you put forth a radical thought process, and I'm merely entertaining that, right? I, I would like to think that too. If some, in some temples, Shiva is not there, some temple in Vishnu is not there, Ganesha is not there. But if in all the temples and all the ancient sites, Nagas are there, then Nagas are the oldest gods around the world. 